What is up, everybody? So I'm not talking about this for the whole thing. Today I'm going to be talking about Downshift 3.0, but I wanted to shout out something super exciting I'm doing, testingjavascript.com, um, where you can learn the smart, efficient way to test any JavaScript application. Uh, so yeah, take a look at this. Um, and uh, hey, look, it's me. So you can um, put your email in here. It puts you on my newsletter, um, and you will get a special discount for this gargantuan huge project um, I've been working on for months um, to get you a silly amount of content on testing. Um, okay, so downshift 3.0 um, um, nvwebd at your service. Oh, hey there. Cool. It's nice to see ya. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> um, I've been sitting on downshift 3 for quite a while. Um, there have been these three thing well actually two things i've been wanting to do for a little while and then there's this last third thing uh, where somebody finally made a pull request that was like a really good pull request and i felt bad making them wait so i was like okay now it's finally time uh to make this a thing so um yeah so this is an accessibility thing it's going to change a little bit the behavior uh the default behavior of downshift so by default now um when you hit the down arrow do, -do, -do yeah, so when you hit the down arrow, um, right there, down arrow, then it will automatically focus on the first option. When you hit the up arrow, it'll automatically focus on the last option. So like this is when it's closed and then you hit, you, it'll open and focus on the last or the first one. Uh, that's a change before if you s just hit the up and down arrow keys, it would um, just open the um, menu and now it actually will select an item. And apparently that's part of um, the ARIA specification. Uh, I missed that, so my bad. Um, but huge thank you to uh, Sylvie, um who made that or noticed that and made that change. So thank you. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is this one has always kind of bugged me. So a while back, um, somebody filed an issue like quite a while back. Um, where they had this problem and I didn't quite understand it. Like I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know what you're talking about. And they gave me a pretty compelling case. Um, and uh, so I, I went with it. Uh, we actually started out with this breaking changes thing um, where you could opt into it. So this happened in 1.0 and then I removed the breaking changes prop in uh, 2.0 um, and it like broke things for a bunch of people and it was kind of kind of confusing. So. Um, basically, what it used to be was um, when you um, when you selected an item, it would first determine if the here actually I can show you the code right here. So um, oh no, it's not there anymore. Uh, right here. So when you selected an item, um, it would say if the selected item is a controlled prop then we'll reset the input value to a default input value. Otherwise, um, we'll set it to the items to string value. Um, and it doesn't really make sense to do this. It should always just be the selected items uh, to string value. That's what should show up in the input when you select a new item. Um, and so that was that was basically the change. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot, uh, whole lot to that one. Um, yeah, but like clearly it was very confusing for a lot of people. So I'm glad to finally have that one done. Um, and then this one is tricky because this one is actually kind of a, um, a design flaw from the very beginning. So um, with downshift, we have these uh, default props. So you have default input value, default uh, selected item, uh, default um, is open, and default highlighted uh, index. And they're not actually defaults. They're, they were defaults and they were initial. Um, and the problem was that in our um, constructor here, uh, we'd say if the selected item is not null, then we're gonna set the input value. So it's actually not, uh, this default input value is not the default uh, because if you have a, a default selected item, then it's going to override the input value. And so um, thinking about it some more, the default value is the wrong um, thing here. It should be initial and default. So we have now, here I can show you the code changes here for this one, because um, I've actually made the pull request for all this stuff. Uh, 
m initial and so updated all the docs so we ended up removing default selected item and default input value in favor of the initial version and then we still have default highlighted index and default is open because those do matter and i'll show you in a sec why they do matter da -da 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 -da. and i added a test for that to make sure that it initializes properly we added our prop types and here's our constructor now it's a fancy uh, destructuring plus, plus defaults plus aliases so how it works is now we uh, destructure out the default highlighted index. This is all coming from props. And then we destructure initial highlighted index and we alias it to highlighted index. And then if initial highlighted index is not defined, then we'll um, get the default highlighted index, which will always be defined because if the user passes it, then they're passing some value. Otherwise we're using default props um, and we set a default for that. I think it, we set it to null. Uh, and then we do the same thing for is open. We destructure default is open. Then we destructure initial is open and alias that to is open and default it to default is open. There you go. Uh, and then we don't have defaults for initial um, input value or initial selected item. Uh, those just are inline default um, stuff. And then to fix the actual bug, we just say if they did um, if they did not provide us an initial input value. So if that's undefined, then we can set the input value the item to string so that fixes uh, fixes the bug um, so the reason that we still have a default for highlighted index and is open is when we um, clear selection or uh, select item or uh, reset then um, we want to like kind of set downshift into its like state at rest or whatever its default state so we're not going to reset the input value or the selected item those will maintain state over time as users are interacting with it and stuff um, but we are going to uh, kind of have a kind of a, a default state like downshift is at rest or whatever uh, to set the um, default is open so normally people are probably going to want the default is open to be false like, I, I don't think people are going to use default is open that prop very much um, but if they want to have the default um, to be open, then like by all means, that's that's what they can do. Uh, and then we can do the same thing with um, select item. You can set the default is open, um, or we do set the default is open. This was fixing that other bug I was talking about. And then we do default highlighted um, index when we clear the selection, so we can set it back to wherever you wanted the default to be. So anyway, it's like, to be perfectly honest, it's not super exciting. I think the most exciting st uh, things uh, that are going on is, you notice we have 43 files changed. Um, that is mostly because I added docz and I'm actually, I need to remove storybook static. So I'm moving from storybook to docz um, because um, storybook was just, I thought it was kind of confusing and um, all of these files, like all these examples and things, we actually are moving to Code Sandbox, and so I don't want them in here anyway. Uh, it made our build a little complicated because we had a different package JSON and stuff. We had to install um, dependencies for these things. So I'm, we're moving all the examples over to a different Code Sandbox, um, and now the docz thing is actually only useful for tests. So this is this is our Cypress tests. Um, it's using docz. We've got just this test thing. We can go home and eventually maybe I'll make this the actual site for the docs or something because docsy is pretty awesome. Um, but for now, it's like pretty basic. No styling going on here. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, sorry, I haven't looked at comments. Oh, snap. I just got 10 pounds or euros. That's euros. Sorry, I, I do know what euros symbol is. That's very nice. Um, from uh, Nedj, no, rats, I can't say your name. Um, Nedj, uh, Nedj, uh, oh, <laughs> Vukovic, Vukovic. Yeah, thank you so much, that was super nice. Um, okay, let's see. Oh yeah, the red number is way bigger than the green number. That's mostly because I removed all the storybook stuff or literally removing a ton of ton of things. Um, got another one inspired by this component to learn more and more. But when I tried to read the code, it was always very big and I built myself to learn this. Um, this is okay. Yeah. So yeah, using downshift, actually, this is, I'm glad you brought this up, Yazan. 
I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, but like we talk on Twitter a lot and I appreciate you. Um, but if you look at downshift.js, the um, downshift.js file in downshift, it is a single file of 100 uh, or 1,173 lines. So it's not small. Um, and actually, so um, a lot of people were wanting to learn from downshift and, and a lot of people have, like, like people have said, I read the code and like, oh my goodness, I learned so many things. Um, so in an effort to, oh, I'm in the wrong thing, autocomplete to Travis. Um, in an effort to take these same patterns and put them in a simpler example for people to learn, I actually created React Toggled. I just did this like one morning just for fun uh, because I've got a project generator and everything so I, I can build things like this really fast. And holy mackerel, I had no idea that 53,000 downloads a month? What are people using this thing? I, I'm not even using this thing. I, I don't really maintain it. Uh, there's not much to maintain, but uh, yeah, this is nuts. So it's uh, just over 100 lines of code, and it um, implements pretty much all the same patterns that Downshift implements. It just has a single uh, single item of state. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully you can learn a lot more from React Toggled about these patterns, because um, yeah, I think it's cool. Cool. All right. Hey, thank you so much. That was super nice of you, um, uh, Vukovic person. Um, Maybe I'll learn how to say your net nedjk not nedjk nedjk nedjk. Okay. Well, thank you anyway for um for that super nice uh, gesture, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited about this testing um course uh, set of cur it's a series of courses. It's um like so it's over a hundred videos and over five hours long. And if you've seen my content before. Uh, it's it's egghead style, so it's all very dense, um, and so that's five hours of extremely dense material. Um, it's like six egghead courses, basically. Um, egghead is helping me with this, but it it's technically d separate from egghead. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be wild. I think you're gonna love it. Uh, I know you'll love it. It's gonna be great, um, and I think you're gonna love downshift three. I'm probably gonna merge this. I am having like I do have a little bit of. I'm having trouble with TypeScript and React Native, um, but I'm not using those personally, and so I can't really do much for those. So I can merge this and then TypeScript and and um, the um, uh, React Native folks can come in later and, and fix those things, and then they can upgrade. Um, cool. Ah, great. Good day. Um, it's weekend. Uh, oh, by the way, I did get that new hardware. Um, hopefully my microphone sounds a lot better um, because yeah I, I it wasn't super expensive basically what it was was I had this old interface that took my microphone um, and connected that to the computer and um, the way that it worked I, I, I go through this um, what is this thing called hold on a second Yeah, it's this thing called a cloud lifter, I guess. I'm not sure what it is, but it, yeah, it's just a little blue box. I, I stick it through. Um, and that apparent, I'm not even sure what it does, but then it goes from that into the interface. But the interface that I had before was a stereo interface. And so it required that I had um, two um, inputs, so left and right. So I uh, got a little XLR splitter and I um, just, uh, yeah, it just split the one channel into two channels so that it like would be two channels, right? Because before I would just record everything in mono and then I'd make it or like on just the left channel and then it'd make it mono. Um, but that doesn't work for live streaming. So I need to have um, have it be two channels. So anyway, um, the problem was that I had to adjust the dials differently. And so that's why you would sometimes hear it in your left ear more than your right or whatever. Um, and then like randomly, it would just change the volume um, part way through um, my like uh, recording. So um, so that was like super frustrating. So I, I, I ended up buying a cheaper little interface that was only one channel. And so my microphone goes into that cloud of cloud lifter thing and then the cloud lifter goes straight into the um, into the interface, just one channel. And I only have one little knob to to turn and um, and then it comes straight to my computer. 
um, and it comes as a stereo, but the two channels are like um, perfect together because that's just how the thing works. I don't know. It's it's magic. I love it. So hopefully that is more help. Uh, like my video recordings will be a lot better because of that. Um, and we don't have any more trouble. I know a lot of people have in, in the YouTube comments have complained about not being able to hear me well enough. Uh, the, the volume, I'm actually, I've turned down the volume. So tell me if I need to be a little, if this needs to be a little bit louder. But if I turn it up, then I get into the red like a lot. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of tweaking things. So yeah, anyway, um, one last thing that I just noticed about this PR is that this adds um, contributor number 100 to the all contributors badge of uh, Downshift, which is pretty, pretty fantastic. It's, that's awesome. Lots of people contributed to this project. Okay, cool. That's pretty much it. Um, let me just check out last comments. Super nice people saying really nice things about me. That's nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. it. Makes me feel all nice and warm. All right. I'm going to take off. Um, have a nice weekend and I will see you next week. Bye. Oh, I, I actually hit the wrong button. Normally I go like this. Bye. <laughs>